Welcome back. The Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation has secured $2 billion discount from renegotiated upstream contracts being executed by its various service providers in the last one year. The group managing director of the corporation, Dr. Mekanti Baru, says the discount was raised to reduce the high cost of production in the oil industry. Dr. Baru explains that the NNPC has also reduced the production cost of crude from $27 to $22 per barrel. We also discussed and were able to renegotiate a lot of the contracts in the upstream. This has given a collective savings of over $2 billion uh, in terms of contract costs to the corporation, of course to the nation and the industry as in general. The ABA, Potakot ABA line has been put in place and we'll be loading products out of, uh, of ABA all the time and these have uh, greatly uh, improved our supply and distribution of white products to the country. We've also restored the pipeline from Kaduna to Kano and as you might have noticed a few weeks back I had gone to relaunch the, depo the loading out of Kano and this has improved greatly the supply of products to the northern part of the country. We have witnessed about 2.3, a little over 2.3 million barrels per day of crude oil and condensate production and we want to sustain this so that the average production that we are having of 1.87 million barrels per day oil and condensate could now go back to at least the budget figure of 2.2 million barrels per day oil and condensate. Group Managing Director of the NNPC, Dr. Maikanti Baru. Residents of a China community in Aguata local government area of Anambra State are crying out to the state government over an alleged project abandonment by a contractor. They say the construction blunder caused by the contractor handling the road project in their community is causing them to live in fear of flood and erosion destroying their farmlands and homes. Our community report tonight looks at the issues and the steps taken by the state government to address the situation. These men would have preferred if this huge rock was gold or some other precious material. Then their efforts could be said to be rewarding. But the reality is that they're chipping away at the boulder to save their lives. A problem the residents say began with the negligence of a company hired by the state government to make their lives a lot more comfortable. The contractor is alleged to have abandoned the drainage system project, leaving the residents with no option than to fend up the water before their homes and farmlands are washed away. We advise the contractor to help us by taking the drainage down to the stream of the river, uh, the base of the stream. It's a cross stream. So the man said yes, but now you see what is happening. He abandoned the work. After some time, he came and started pouring stone into the drainage. And the thing is devastating, the erosion is devastating the farmland and property of the people. This woman is filled with desperation and frustration. She lives every day in perpetual fear that all she has may soon be lost. The whole area where I cultivated my crops, water comes and covers. Everything I planted is gone. I have nothing. Even the house is affected. When it rains, I shiver. I can't sleep when it rains. I'm about to lose my house to erosion. I'm pleading with the government to help. My husband and I don't have money to build another house. Just take a look at all of this yourself. I'm about losing everything I have. It appears the barrage of complaints from the residents finally got the Commissioner of Works to act, and he issues an ultimatum. We am going to go there with the contractor, with my team of engineers. We we'll visit that community and see the best way to discharge that water. We are going to remedy that situation. The message hits home and a spokesperson for the company promises to make amends. The contractor itself, they have 
something big they are going to do. There's going to be a, um, a 16 mm. It has all the necessary um, apparatus that needs to be used in making sure this whole thing gets um, properly built. It should be done there. With the authorities breathing down the neck of the contractor, the residents will feel a sense of relief that the plight may soon be alleviated. But there is a bigger lesson they would want the contractors to learn from this. One that will ensure that in future, those given the job of executing projects that affect a lot of people live up to the responsibility that got them the work in the first place. Students of the Oshun State University have taken to the streets of Oshobo, the state capital, protesting the alleged killing of their colleague by ritualists. The angry students marched from their school to the palace of the Ataoja of Oshobo before stopping at the Olaya roundabout where they set up a bonfire. The students had on Tuesday burnt down a house close to where the diseased body was discovered. And time now for some business news, and here's Anne. You first. First Bank. Laddie. And to business stories now, the target of 1 billion U.S. dollars income generation set by the Nigerian government from the new voluntary assets and income declaration scheme has now been described as enormous. That's according to a partner and leader of West Africa Tax Matters at Deloitte Nigeria, Mr. Yomi Olubenro. The task is enormous, and I think uh, in recognition of that, what the finance ministry uh, uh, in conjunction with FRS has done is to actually raise additional manpower to support on a short-term basis. So there are 7,500 uh, CTLO, uh, community tax liaison officers, that have been uh, recruited under the Empower scheme to support this particular scheme. So these guys will go all around doing all of the enlightenment, all of the campaign, helping you to understand where do you pick the form, uh, what do you do, and... and Within that, all of the uh, activities that the uh, um, presidency is doing with the enabling business committee, because all of these are interlinked, that our people are willfully defaulting is just a side of the story. There is also massive burden when it comes to compliance with taxes. The, the World Bank uh, Paying Taxes Index put us in the bottom 10 out of about 190 countries that were surveyed. The managing director of the Federal Mortgage Bank, Ahmed Dangiwa, has announced plans to complete all abandoned mortgage homes across Nigeria. After inspecting some projects currently undergoing repairs in Kaduna State, Mr. Dangiwa said the plan will help the agent's mandate of bridging the housing deficit in the country. As part of the efforts of the new management is to ensure that the completion of all ongoing, abundant, and even non-completed projects that are within the five years, that are within the finance of the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria. So we felt that uh, there is a need to visit the estates to assess them and know the progress they have achieved and then uh, see towards which we can complete them uh, soonest in order to package them for mortgage to the contributors of National Housing Fund scheme. I'm highly impressed in the sense that uh, this meeting involves the developers who are there and even the, 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 the occupants who have been mortgaged the houses with. So the interaction is good in such as it has afforded us an opportunity to meet with them, to know their problems, to discuss them and see how we can uh, remedy most of the things we have seen. And the development has been that uh, this estate in particular has almost been commissioned. The other one we have visited is, uh, is not yet commissioned. So the issue is that uh, we have to come and see what needs to be done. Nigeria's stock market extended the losses to the third consecutive session this week as analysts expect the pressure to continue in tomorrow's session. Chimeze Obiwago has the details. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. 
The bearish sentiment at the Nigerian equities market seems to be thinning out after two days of heavy fall. Today, the all share index dropped by just 0.33%. The consumer goods in the likes of flour mills and Unilever drove the index into the red. The banking sector shares have stabilized and that sector recorded just 0.34% drop compared to 2.26% drop recorded in Tuesday's trading. On the price movement chart, flour mills lost 9.72% leading the losers, while Unity Bank was the highest gainer by 9.84%. Wednesday's trading recorded improved transaction volume and value with a value almost at 3 billion naira. Interestingly, Maja Insurance pushed the banks aside to emerge the highest volume driver leading the top trades. Analysts say the recently released PMI is indicative of a steadily improving economy and are confident that half-year earnings season remains the major catalyst for a market resurgence. And of course, traders expect a better deal on Thursday. And that was the Stock Market Report. I'm Chibeze Obi Iwawu. Thanks a lot, Chimeze. Now let's check out U.S. stocks. They resumed with mixed trading today after the independence holiday. That's ahead of the release of minutes of the Fed June meeting. VOA Channel's TV business correspondent, Jill Malandrino, tells us more. The S&P 500 and Dow Jones Industrial Average sold off in early trade due to weakness in crude oil following eight straight sessions of the commodity trading higher. The Nasdaq was up about two-tenths of a percent, but if the composite closes down today, it will be for the fourth straight trading session. That's something we have not seen since November. Otherwise, it's a relatively quiet day for U.S. markets in terms of data and earnings, although we will get the minutes from the Federal Reserve's June 13th and 14th meeting at 2 p.m. Eastern, with traders looking for any hints on when the central bank will start to shrink its balance sheet and raise interest rates again. Looking ahead, traders will be focused on the all-important employment report on Friday. That's at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. As a reminder, I will have instant reaction to the data on Business Incorporated, as we always do, on the first Friday of the month when the report is released. On the political front, U.S. and global markets will be focused on President Trump's second overseas visit since he took office en route to Poland and the G20, highlighted by his meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin on Friday, as well as heightening tensions on the Korean Peninsula and China. From the Nasdaq market site in New York, I'm Jill Malandrino, and this is BOA Channel's Business News. And as for other major stocks around the world, they closed mostly in the green today despite geopolitical tensions after North Korea launched a ballistic missile on Tuesday. Let's see the numbers. business news tonight. Thanks a lot for watching. It's back to you, laddie. You first. First Bank. Thank you, Anne. Still ahead on the news at 10, Nigerian striker Emmanuel Emenike joins Greek champions Olympiakos on a two-year contract. That will be in the sports news. Please join us again. Thank you.